Yo, what's good guys? It's Bev from Artifact. Today we're going to update your Lens Studio clone filter. So we're on version 4.28 here. So this is the newest one. So you can update your Lens Studio, get the newest one. It will work. And we're going to download the files we need and apply this new feature that just came out this month, Face Occlusion. Okay, so what do we need? Clone files. We need to download all your clone files. They need to be extracted out like this, where they're all in these folders, right? To get these clone files, if you don't know, go to clonex.artifact.com and log in with your MetaMask and download your clone files. Once you have your clone files, you're good to go. Just make sure you know where they are and that we can find them later, right? So next we need this file, the project file we're going to work on today. And it's going to be called clonex snapchat filter. So included with this video, you can download this project file and it'll be done for you basically. And then extract it just like your clone files open this up and this is the folder location that we really actually need right okay now inside of lens studio we're gonna go file open project and we're gonna go and find where this clone x snapchat filter template folder is and then <laughs> open that so this guy right here we're gonna hit open it's gonna load lens studio has this habit of disappearing and then I'm gonna have to grab it once it loads so you might see there we go it it disappeared and then here we are so by default it's gonna look at what cameras you have and turn on that camera and you'll have a live feedback of your clone filter face going on over here right if you don't have a camera this mode right next to it where my mouse is at is gonna be the other default mode yeah where it's gonna just kind of overlay on top of a picture but if you do have a camera it's much easier because you get this live feedback going on the entire time right now viewport this in the center of your screen is your viewport if you want to be able to use this basically all you need to know is it's the middle mouse wheel but you also have these buttons up here so if I click on this then I can like move things but in the hand the hand is is allows you to left click and drag around but if you have a scroll wheel you don't really have to know any of these functions you can just zoom with the scroll wheel and then click and hold the scroll wheel for drag around just so you can get a better view of what's going on inside your scene and from here you actually already have face occlusion you know big shout out to camx1021 he he sent me a dm showed me his project and was like yeah this is how we're going to do it and that helped me a ton to speed this up so you guys can have this available for use sooner than later right and then here i'll give you an example so if i put my hand up and I move it very carefully into the camera scene and then I put it in front of something am I too close to the camera maybe I put it in front of my face look it's in front of the clone filter so that's the new feature basically you can have your hand go in front of your clone filter without your filter disappearing so now we just have to rebuild our clone. So if you already know how to build your clone filter, you can just do that real quick because it takes a couple minutes. But if you don't know, I'm gonna walk you through it anyway in this in the rest of this video. Okay, so in the bottom left section of your screen, this is where all your materials are. So if I scroll down, you can scroll down with me. We're looking for the materials folder with all of these purple icons in here. This is what we are gonna modify to change this current clone filter into your clone. Okay, so let's start with the eyes. So you can see here we have eye right and eye left indicated by R and L. If I click on eye R, this menu will pop up over here and you'll see we have at the end of each of these images, these are the image reference symbol, it has D, N, and R. So we're gonna replace these, okay. So in your folder, right I'm gonna put this on another screen next to me so if you have another screen next to you it's gonna help a lot for organization but I'm gonna navigate over to my eyes real quick and then I'll show you in a moment so okay back over into the clone files I am looking for eye color eyes angel yellow combine because these are my eyes and your eyes are gonna be different if you have different colored eyes just look for eye color and we want the texture and inside of this texture we want what we were just looking at. We want the D, the R, the N for this normal. 
But the easiest thing we can do is just highlight these four, and these are the four that we're going to actually go for. If you have an E, you might want the E, and I'll show you that in an example in, in, an example in a moment. Okay. So this is the location that we're looking for and the files we're looking for. You can just click up here and copy this location. And then inside of Lens Studio, we're going to go File. We're going to go into Import. And then we're going to paste in the location. Or you can just go in and find it. I'm going to hit Paste and hit Enter. And that will load it right up to what we need. And then I'm going to highlight the four that we're looking for. And I'm going to quickly discuss this too. So it doesn't necessarily matter if it's F or M, starting with F or M. This is like for gender, but the files are in most scenarios identical. So it doesn't really matter. And then your eye shine, we're not working on the shine. And the shine is the same for every clone. So you don't need these either. We just really need this set of four and that's it. So if I highlight these four and hit open, we'll see them populate here at the bottom left. And by default in this project file, it also has enabled auto compress. So by default, it's, it's auto compressing your images so that when we get to the part where we upload it to Snapchat, it should work automatically because we are already compressing the images and the file size should be getting pushed down. Okay. So now that we have these four here in the bottom left of our screen, I'm going to left click and highlight the four. And if that doesn't work for you, you can also click the top one, hold shift. Okay, this is not, not in not in rename mode. Just select the top one, hold shift, and select the bottom one, and that'll also highlight the four. And we're gonna scroll up real quick and look at where we're gonna put it. So here we have the Clonex base, DNA, eyes. So I'm gonna just clean up my project file by putting it with the other eye images. So I'm gonna left click here, hold, drag, and carefully move my mouse up because it gets crazy like that. Okay. And then carefully go down that. And up oh, and eyes. Found it. Boom. Okay. Eyes folder. My new eye textures. And then under materials, we're gonna click on the right eye. And all you really need to know is the one that says D at the end and N at the end and R at the end. We're gonna replace it with our files that have the same thing. So ours are ending with angel yellow D. So left click and hold, drag into D. And then the same thing for the N and the same thing for the R. And now we have all of these replaced with our new image and you can see here my clone eye is yellow. And then if you have an E which is not required, it's optional, under emissive that's what that stands for. So if I drag and drop the E into this texture slot here, which is only available after you enable emissive, then I can move the intensity bar and you can see it whitening up a little bit based on that color that I have provided. So for me, I think it's fine somewhere around, I don't know, here. That looks good. Sure. And then there you go. That's how you, we just did it. We're done with one eye. So we can quickly go to the other eye and I can show you how fast it really is. So if we go to the other eye, same thing, D and R emissive enable the emissive so I have that slot open and then drag the D into the D slot the N into the N slot the R into R and E into E and then I I'm for uh, to make it balanced I'm gonna copy this 0.86 that I used on the first one and I'm gonna paste it into the second one and there we go my eyes are the same cool we have yellow eyes now we'll talk about lighting a little bit because your eyes are done, but maybe you don't like the lighting of your scene. Okay. And then we'll hop into DNA. So lights are at the top left of your screen. It'll say lights. And then you're going to have four different lights. And if we click on it, it's also going to change this area. And you'll see the first one is an environment map. You don't need to touch this. Leave it alone. But the other ones, you have your point and two ambient lights. By default, we have it set up with this really just normal white room light. You can leave it at like this if you want to. If you don't want to change the lighting that we have set up, you don't have to. It's fine. But if you do want to change it, the way you would change it is you would select these lights up here, the one you, you want. And you can see in the scene which one is being selected. So right now I have this one selected. And if I switch, now it's this one, right? And it's changing which light is being selected, as including their options here. And if you change this, 
it'll change the light, right? So, and then I can hit Control Z if I want to just undo what I did. And you can also go in here and change the color. So if you don't like white, you can go with red. You know, you can do any of the lighting tricks or setups that you want to get your clone filter looking exactly the way that you desire, right? Okay. Now we'll move into DNA because DNA is going to replace our face. In this bottom left, similar to the eyes folder, we have a DNA folder. And under materials, we also have a DNA material. Okay. The process is the exact same thing. We just did this. So if I go file, import, instead of this eyes folder, we're going to go find our DNA folder, go into textures, select all of them because there's only four in this scenario, hit open. They're going to show up here at the bottom, right? They're importing right now. Then we're going to highlight the four and we're going to very carefully scroll, ah, perfect, and drop them into DNA. So now I have DNA, my four new textures. Go back to Clone X DNA material, select it, and replace. So Angel D goes into the D slot here, where it says D at the end. And then N will go into the N slot. R will go into the R slot. And then turn on emissive. And E will go into that E slot. And then, you see we don't really have the lines in the face yet. So what we're going to do is turn the intensity up. And... I don't see it yet. There we go. It was just lagging a little bit. So if I turn the intensity up, you see now we have the white lines that the angel signature is basically, right? Okay. So boom. Now I have angel DNA enabled. The only thing left for you to do besides your DNA and your lighting and your eyes is your traits. Now it's really on you of what traits you have because every clone's unique, right? But So I'm going to show you how we can really quickly go through and add all of your traits, the fastest way that I know of. So we're going to go File, Import, back into our clone files here. We're going to find the traits that you have. So I'm going to start with my hair. So I have hair white stylish. Now if I open this up, I'm going to go into Mail because that's what I'm going to build. And I'm going to go into this GLTF folder. This is the one we need, okay? This is the fastest way to do this. So open the GLTF and select the only file that should be in there. And then, or if there's multiple, just click any of them. They, they all should work. And if one doesn't work, try another, right? So this one, and hit open. And then you're gonna see imported into our scene is the head somewhere. As soon as it loads in. It's still not loaded in. Okay, so it's still not loaded. You can, it's frozen, there it is. Okay, so it mine took a little long. But once it loads in, you'll get this menu. It's fine. Leave it as default. Just hit import. And then it's going to import your whatever trait you added. So mine is hair. So you can see on mine, the hair is just kind of floating in the scene. Not what we need. This is how we attach it. So on your top left, you should have the name of the file that we just added. M White Stylish Geo is mine. And a little blue cube next to it. Click on that. And once you click on that, we're going to drag it to the top. So left click, hold, drag it to the top and drop it inside of character expressions, add traits here. Okay. So add it to this spot. Once you're in this spot right here, it's now in this folder. We're going to go over to the right side of the screen where it says skin and we're going to clear the skin. So now it's not attached to the skin. And then we're going to go to scale and type in a hundred. So type in 100, hit tab, 100, tab, 100, tab, or enter for the last one. And then now your hair is attached to your clone. That's it. And then you repeat this process for each trait. So I'm gonna do it again with a halo so you can see. So I'll go file, import, and then I'm gonna go to clone files. I'm gonna find my halo. So that is somewhere, halo, mail, gltf, and then the gltf file itself, hit open, this pops up, hit import, let it do its thing, it's loading, it's loading, and then you can see it's free floating, not what I need. Grab the mhalo geo file here with the blue box, scroll to the top, or just click and hold and drag and wait till it goes to the top, drop it in character expressions, clear the skin from this area right here, and make the scale 100. 
And then now your clone Halo, if you were doing that, is now attached to your clone with your movement. So you're now we have two traits added to the clone scene. Okay. So from here, you continue the same exact process until each of your traits are added. And once all of your traits are added, you're you're actually pretty much done. Okay, so for, for me, I know I also need to import um, the... I don't have eyebrows. Yeah, we gotta fix that. So, eyebrows, lines, male, GLTF, rigid lines, import. And you can see here how once you get the hang of it, it's really, really quick. Right, so once it's imported, I have the M lines geo here. Grab it, just drag all the way to the top. And then drop it inside of this character expressions. So it's in here. Clear the scene and make it 100. And in a second, I will have eyebrows. Okay, there we go. So now I have my hair, eyebrows, halo, all attached to my clone filter. It moves with me, right? And that's pretty much it. Your clone filter is built. It's actually really, really quick. And with this project file, you will already have built in face occlusion. And then you would just go up into the project info, update the project info, how, how you feel is proper, right? Apply it. And then you would hit publish lens. And then your lens would be published to your Snapchat account. You do need to make a Snapchat account, right? And then log in. And then with that, you can hit publish and it will show up on your Snapchat for use. You can also hit send to Snapchat at this top right here, and you can test it with your Snapchat app on your phone without even plugging it in. Just hit this button, and then that filter is now available for your own private use within Snapchat, right? And then once your lens is, lens is published, which does take a little bit of time, then you will have the ability to pull it up on Snapcam, right? And I can show you that real quick. On Snapcam, let me pull that up on snap cam and I can't use it right now because I mean I'm in lens studio right now but in snap cam it'll pop up here and then once you're logged in you'll be able to search for your lens and you can just paste the link in for your lens so I'm gonna give you an example I have this clone filter that I always use and if I can I just click on it ah let me pull that away in case you can't see that I don't know I'm going to copy, uh, yeah, I'll copy the link. So what you're going to have when you publish your lens is a long link that looks like this. You're actually going to search for this. So search for this long link, and then that's how you get your lens, and hit the little favorite, and then it'll show up in here whenever you need your, your clone filter, and then just click on it, and then now you have your Snapchat lens on top of your computer for Google Meets, Discord, um, whatever chats you're on that, were, that use a video camera. And that's basically it. You built your clone filter with this new project file. You'll be good to go. And as we add and update new things for clone filters, we will update the project file, we'll release it, and we'll do a similar process to this to rebuild your clone filter with all the new updates. And that's pretty much it, guys. I hope you learned something. I hope you enjoyed the video. And I'll catch you guys in the next one.